It's Ron Betsky, and we're in the Vettatini with the roof off like a Houdini, baby. Hey, and we're getting green like zucchini, and guess what? I think some of the haters really want to beat me on the low. <laughs> Please don't try me. <laughs> and guess what? We got, a, we got a special guest, baby. This is OVO. OVO. Comment below if you understand what I'm saying. This is OVO right here, baby. So, this is going to be episode two of Vet Talk. Please don't try me. I'm like that thing spark, baby. Episode two of Vet Talk. And we're going to do some Q&As for anybody who had questions, who had put it on, uh, put it on the community page. We are going to be answering your questions today on this beautiful Monday. We're about to get this Monday. Let's go. Okay, so question number one comes from Juju, and they say, do you guys ever take a day off just to relax? Juju on a beat? Juju, what you know about this Juju on a beat? Huge shout out to Juju for asking this question. Honestly, baby, absolutely not. We grind every day, every single day. We don't miss a day. And on October 24th, it will be our one year anniversary of us uploading a video every single day. Now, the question is, why do we upload every single day? Because huge shout out to Mr. Organic, Tall Guy, and CZ on 32. They gave me the blueprint. But they didn't give me the blueprint directly. I watched them do the pro blueprint and I just do it. If you upload a video every single day on YouTube, you just have a better opportunity and better chance to get out to more people. That's what I think. So huge shout out to them. And I've been watching their channels for a long time since the beginning, baby. But honestly, we're not taking no days off, baby. We don't got no time to relax. We go, hey, I relax when I die. Because I got a lot of stuff that I really want to do um, it's a lot of goals I'm trying to hit, so we're gonna grind to the end of time. Maybe we're gonna keep on shining, we're gonna keep on grinding, we're gonna keep on climbing to the top. Okay, the next question comes from Creative Chaos, and they say, Would you guys consider getting your CDL license as another hustle? KK, huge shout out to you. You know what you did. I ain't even gonna tell, I ain't gonna tell everybody because I ain't their business, baby. But will we get our CDL? Honestly, my, my old mentor, he always told me to get my CDL a long time ago. He always said, Get your CDL, get your CDL. And honestly, I really don't want to drive no trucks. But guess what? If the money is right, guess what? We will be getting the CDLs. And hey, we're going to get to this money regardless of whatever it may be. If they say that getting CDLs and we can make this amount of much money, I'm doing it. That's just what I do. As a hustler, that's what you do. Whatever you see, whenever you see an opportunity, you're going to take advantage of the opportunity and get it done and get on the run. And huge shout out to you again. And thanks for asking the question. Okay, the next question from ZGI High says, I know I've asked this before, but why don't you try going to downtown Chicago? I do DoorDash and Grubhub there, and I make $25 to $35 plus per hour on a bike. I think you might make more, and you're only 45 minutes away. It would be good content. Look, man, we <laughs> I know y'all saw us doing Amazon Flex, Flex, Flex. Amazon Flex in Chicago, baby. It was critical. What I do, um... Honestly, I may do it. It depends on... Y'all got to give me like three or four, four, 400 likes. If y'all give me 400 likes on this video, I'll do it. The next video. The next time, if we get 400 likes in 24 hours, we will go to downtown Chicago and do us a DoorDash video downtown. We ain't playing around. So if y'all get the 400 likes, we'll do it. Other than that, honestly, baby, I do not like going out there. There'd be way too much traffic. it be too much going on. And it's just so much... It's just so different, guys. I know if you guys... If you haven't seen the video of me doing Amazon Flex downtown Chicago. You might want to go check out that video. You'll see what I'm saying. But either way it go, we're going to get these bands. You understand? Okay, so the draw JC asks, have you ever thought about putting your Corvette on Turo? JC, what's going on? She's asked you for answering this question. Honestly, when I first got the vet, that was my plan to put it on Turo. But then I did some research and watched some YouTube videos. And guess what? <laughs> I'm going to be highly upset if somebody messed up my car. So I decided not to do it. And I still may do it later on. It depends on... How much they trying to pay, baby? Because they trying to pay that good money. And I also noticed that when I watched the video that some of the people saying it's hard to get your like um, insurance claims and all that stuff with Turo. And a lot of times they push more towards the person who rented the car versus pushing towards the owner. So I ain't got time to be playing no games, baby. I'm trying to do my thing. I'm trying to change lanes. But if the price is right, it's possible. I Honestly, a couple people I know asked me, can they rent it out? I just don't know, man, because I don't, I don't want no problems, man, because I, I'm going to be upset about it, and I don't want to put myself in that type of situation. 
So I may do it, I may not. I don't know. It depends on. I still only have the car for a year. So if I get tired of it, I'll just say, forget it, just do it. Then I'll do it. But other than that, I don't know, baby. I'll think about it. Okay, Jeff the Titan asked, did you use your savings or did someone help you invest in your first piece of real estate? Jeff, what's going on? Me personally, I use my savings. Um, no one helped me do anything when I first got in real estate, nothing. I had my credit right, I had my W-2s, tax returns, I had everything situated, and then I used the money I was saving from working my job. Because the whole, let me say, let me just explain to you guys how I got into real estate. This is how it all started, right? I wanted my money to make money for me. So I used to do research and all that stuff about different things I could do to make that. Because I really wanted to quit my job very, very bad. Because I never wanted to work for nobody. So that's the reason why I even got into real estate in the first place. So every day I used to go home, write down 10 things. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, I can do that. So basically I just felt I'm going to hard real estate. So I told my mom, yeah, I'm about to get into real estate and all that stuff. And then she told me that I should call her friend, her best friend, huge shout out to Annette. Her best friend brother is doing heavy real estate in Chicago. He out there getting busy. So I got his phone number, I called him, I talked to him, and he told me that I need to get into rental property. So that's what I did. I had money saved up already. I was saving my money because I already knew I was gonna do something. And then I just got into real estate. He told me what to do. He told me I need to have all these paperwork. I got the paperwork together. Then I um, called a lender and everything, set up everything, and I did it and ha made it happen. Honestly, guys, I'm gonna tell you guys the truth. It's so look, we just we just um, sold a house to a 23 and a 21 year old. They're together. Huge shout out to them for uh, buying a house with us. Called them on the buy, said they home. They were 23 and 21, and he said it himself. It's easy. It's so it's so easy. It's hard. It's hard not to do it. I know a lot of people may think it's hard, but it's nothing. It's really nothing to do. You just gotta have your paperwork situated and have some money saved up. Beat your top for two years. Had a W two, tax return, all that stuff. And you can get in the house as fast as you want to, baby. Just like that, 30 days. We just closed the house in 30 days, 3-0. We got dope. Okay, um, Daisha asks, do you think that you will ever stop working the gig apps? Day, day, say, say, whatever one you want to use, baby. Um, absolutely, honestly, this, this is what it is, right? Again, I say if I see an opportunity, then I'm gonna take the opportunity. If gig app is trash and it's not working for us anymore, we're gonna move on. That's just what I do. I don't sit and stay on one thing. I go wherever the money at. Wherever the money at, that's where I go. That's where I reside, baby, when it's time to slide. So if gig gap uh, actually like start going real, start terrible, we're gonna move on to the next thing. Or if something else just come up and it's better for us and we're making more money, like the one we just did before, just like we did the liquidation for those who hate, we skating. Um, if we see an opportunity, we're gonna go there, baby. That just is what it is. That's how we do things. And I don't get married to, to any app or anything in life. I just move on. Wherever the money is, that's where I go. The next question comes from James and he says, you say all the money from your gig jobs go into investing. What money do you use to live on and pay the bills? Does that come from real estate? James, gold all in my chain. Gold all in my ring. Gold all in my watch. Don't believe me, just watch. But y'all know about that. Comment below and let me know if you know about that. So huge shout out to James for asking this question. Honestly, I really don't spend much money. So I spend what I need to spend and that's it. I don't buy stuff. I don't splurge. You go buy this and buy that and buy that. I rarely buy anything. And um, I really use the money that we get from selling property. Like when we help somebody buy and sell houses, that's what I. That's the money I use to pay for the stuff I need to pay for per month. Which honestly, I really don't spend that much money anyway. And then what's ever left over, I use it. Just let it sit there and then I invest it and invest it and invest it and invest it. And you want, all, I, I recommend everybody Go start investing. It don't have to be in real estate. It doesn't have to be in crypto or stocks. Whatever you may want to invest the money in, you have to invest. You want your money to make money. So what we do is we make money and then we make our money make money. We make more have little babies and all that stuff. So if you are investing, please just look into it. It, don't, it doesn't matter what it is. You just want to put that money somewhere and put it to work so it can work. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so Josette asks, how do you start how did you start off in real estate? Joe Joe. So, I'm gonna give you both sides. So, I started off in real estate as an investor before I even got my real estate license. First thing I did was bought a property. I actually bought two properties before I got my real estate license. So, again, like I said in the previous question, that I saved my money up, got every, all my paperwork situated, and bought my first property with my mentor. Secondly, I, like I, my plan was to buy a property every year. That was the plan. But the second property didn't happen how it was supposed to happen because it was like, we were supposed to close in November, but we ended up closing like January or something like that. So um, I got in, I bought the property, then I bought the second property. Then after I bought the second property, my uh, my mentor told me that I should get my license because he's gonna open his own brokerage. So he told me that, I went, to my, I went to the class. So when I went to the class, that's when I met my business partner. 
We went there. Well, we didn't even know each other. We went there. We were doing the class and everything. Everybody was supposed to meet at the library so we could study and everything. And me and her is the only people that showed up. So that's pretty much how I got into real estate. Okay, Octavius asks, have you ever thought about doing Grubhub? Tay, Tay, Tay. Actually, guess what? Our first gig after we ever applied for was Grubhub, and they still ain't approved me yet. That was almost a year ago. I don't know what's going on with Grubhub, but they didn't let me go ahead and get in so I can wet up like a tub. I need to go ahead and get in and get busy with Grubhub to add it to the repertoire of everything else we got going on already. But I definitely would uh, do some Grubhub orders if they let me get in. Let me in now. Let me in. Let me in, baby. Okay, and Blake asks, do you help people get into real estate game from other states? Blake, huge shout out to you for uh, answering this question. Um, it depends on what you want to do. As a real estate agent, you have to get your license per state. So it's not like you just get one license and then you just go anywhere you want. You got to get one. So we got Illinois and Wisconsin. Those are the only two we have. And if you guys want to get into real estate, you ask questions or anything, you definitely can go ahead and email me at grownshopsviews at gmail.com. If you're trying to like buy a house or something like that, or uh, get some information about investing or even get your license. All of it is pretty easy. You just got to put the work and the time in. Regardless of every, anything you do in life, you're going to have to put a lot of work and a lot of time in it if you really want to get it done. And both of us passed our both exams on the first try, and that's very rare. 22% of the people uh, passed that. So with both of us, that's like, like 12%. So if you want to get in, just let me know. We can talk about it, and I can let you guys, I'll point you in the right direction and let you know what you need to do. And uh, it's pretty simple, though. Hey, it's so easy, it's hard. It's hard not to do Everybody be making it seem like, oh, this, it's, it's, it's not, everything in life is easy, it's just as easy as you make it. So sometimes people may uh, be on social media and you think you can't do something when you really can. You can go out there and get these bands, you understand? Okay, he also asks, how many sources of income do you think an entrepreneur needs to survive? Ooh, wait, that's a good question. That is a good question. That's kind of I don't I don't know if I know how many you need to survive because it all depends on how many uh, how much money you're making from one source you know what I'm saying so it's like a kind of a hard question to answer it depends on what each source is making me personally I'm trying to get to seven sources of income I think I'm at four we got YouTube we got the merch we got gig work oh, I'm at five we got gig work we have real estate rental properties and then we have real estate buying and selling so that's five. I'm trying. They say every millionaire, most of the millionaires, have seven sources of income to be a millionaire. So that's what I'm working on. That and if I can get twenty, I can have that. Any, any, everything counts, baby. But um, it just really depends on how much you're making in each income. But I definitely believe that everyone, not even just entrepreneurs, everyone should have more than one source of income. Because once that one source is gone, then what you gonna do after that? That's another reason why I bought multiple units. Not just one, multiple units. Because that means you got multiple monies coming from everywhere, from each from each tenant, versus you just having one tenant. And what if they, what's going to happen if they leave? Then they're just gone. So think about that. So let me ask you a question off of his question. Okay. So based on the source of income, like he asked, how much money do you think over the amount of money that someone needs to survive every month should they try to bring in every month? Uh, an extra? Yeah, like like if so if I need a thousand dollars a month just to survive to pay my bills and food and everything, should I bring in two thousand every month, three thousand? Like what should my goal be to to start to save to get comfortable? First off about the being comfortable thing, I think that you're only comfortable until you're uncomfortable because situations happen. You never know what might happen. You might think you've been saving and all that stuff and then something else happened. Because people some people are like, man, that's enough money. It's never enough money to me. Because there's gonna be different situations in your life where you're gonna have you're gonna, you're gonna have you're not gonna have enough money to do whatever you want to do or whatever you need to do or whatever you may have to do so that's how I feel about that but um honestly when I first started off my mentor he was telling me you need to try to get like a, at least an extra thousand dollars a month off the rental property that should be your goal off each rental property get a thousand extra dollars so um, I think if you're saving a thousand dollars a month because honestly if you guys do the statistics only there is like only 76% of the people don't have $400 in savings. So most and mostly everybody is living paycheck to paycheck already right now. So if you're getting an extra thousand a month saving, I think that's pretty decent starting off. I mean, and it really depends on how far you want to take it. Okay, Ja DeGard asks, I, my question is, what is your acceptance rate on DoorDash? Ja, Ja, for the cause. Uh, my acceptance rate is actually at 12%, but 
to me personally, the deception rate doesn't matter. Everybody, that, that, that stuff don't matter, man. Sometimes I get good orders, sometimes I get bad orders. We did make $41.06 on DoorDash on my app today. And we did a lot of, we did all uh, four apps today. We did some instant cards, we did some deliver that, deliver that if you, we did some deliver that, we did uh, Uber Eats too. So it doesn't stop you from making money your acceptance rate. And I actually tested this all out because before, when I we used to do videos way before, I want to get my acceptance rate up so I can be, uh, what is it called? Top dasher. Oh, I want to be a top, I was trying to be a top dasher to see what happened. I got my set my uh, set rate up to 76% and guess what they finessed me. So if you haven't watched that video, it's way, way far back. You guys to scroll through the videos, but you can find that video and see what happened, baby. Okay, and Taryn asks, when you started doing real estate for the first time, how did your experience go? Taryn, what's going on? Hey, huge shout out to my guy, Taryn. Taryn has been around since the beginning, since the beginning. He's been around since the house reviews. Huge shout out to you. I appreciate all the support. He watched every video. He commented on every video. He's been there since the house reviews. That was the long, that's when I first started. But um, my first, my experience was actually pretty smooth, man. Cause my mentor, he's 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 a legend. He's legendary. He helped me. He told me exactly what to do. And all you gotta do is follow directions, man. It's pretty simple. You're gonna get this. I'm gonna say I'm gonna give you a rundown right now. It's called the tools. I call them the tools. So this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need the last two years of W twos. You're gonna need the last two years of tax returns. You're gonna need the last two bank statements. You're gonna need the, the last two pay stubs. And you're gonna to need to have a job for sure. You're gonna to need to be there for at least two years on top of that. And you're gonna to have to have some money saved in the bank so you can buy the property. That's it, that's all. That's all you need, baby. So if you can do that, if, again, we just sold the house to the 23 and the 21 year old. Huge shout out to them again. If they can do it, you definitely can do it. All you gotta do is put your mind to it. And what's the least amount that one of your clients had to bring to closing cash out of their pocket? Oh, see, y'all don't even know. See. Uh, now, let me just say this. Let me say this. This is a disclaimer. I want to say this before I even talk about this. I want to let you guys know this because I don't want you expecting this. That's why I'm going to say it right now. This is very, very, very rare. It happens only one time from all the clients we ever had. It was only one time. And this happened. So do not expect this. It might not happen to you. We had a client. Huge shout out to her. Do you know how much she brought to closing? She brought $157 to close. That's how much she brought. They have a lot of grants and programs and all that stuff for first time home buyers. It depends on the lender. $157, that's what she brought to closing. So, the least, the most, the, the least amount I ever brought to closing was $4,000, 4K, 4K. That's what I brought to closing. That was why I did the FHA loan. And what's the most you ever brought? The most. It was like 36,000 well, not counting a flip a flip is different it's not you buying a house to live in oh okay so the most I, oh my first property 8500 8500 who run it 8500 done baby 8500 that's that's what got me off the flow 8500 we got it done 8500 that's it okay so you answered his question based on your real estate experience with purchasing or purchasing a property but what about um your real estate experience for the first time you helping a client oh okay because you didn't specify so story I think you should go both. story time huge shout out to troy troy and Ms. mr and mrs jackson was our first client ever we closed on on the day after christmas too huge shout out to them so i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna give you the story of what happened right so, be previous to me doing YouTube videos, I used to do a video every single day. See, I told you I've been doing this blueprint for a long time. I used to do a video every single day. We used to go on um, the MLS. The MLS is where all the houses are listed at for all the realtors. We used to go on there, we used to find a house, we, do a, we used to do a house review. So, we were doing a house review. I used to do it on Facebook with the phone up like this. Not the, not the fat way, phone up like this. We was doing one of those reviews, walk through the house, talk to them about everything, right? Next thing you know, this car pulled up. This car pulled up like, yeah, this dude pulled up. He's like, yeah, I want to buy this house, man, woo, woo, and all this stuff. I was like, we were thinking about buying it to a four flip. That's the reason why we was think even looking at the house. Boom. He gave me his information, and it started off to the races. Gave me his information, and I ain't going to lie. That joint was critical. He got a thing called an FHA 203K loan. So that loan is where you get a house, and you get the money to fix up the house also. So he got one of those. Oh, my God. That was, that was critical. We probably went to that house 25 times. No no bull. Because he had to have different contractors come in. They got to get the bins and all that stuff. And then they got to get the bins. They got to turn the bins in. And he got to pick which one he's going to go with. We probably went to that house 25 times. No bull. 
He had, to, he had to get plumbing, he had to get HVAC, he had to get all electric, he had to get all the stuff. But the house is amazing, beautiful. We did a, we, 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 hey, we did a video on that too. We revisited the Jacksons and that, so that y'all know what's happening. If you guys go to my YouTube channel way back again, you're gonna see that we revisited them and they showed us everything that they fixed up on the house and everything. But that was absolutely terrible. We did get it done, baby. Everything ain't gonna be easy in life. If you wanna achieve your goals and you wanna get your pockets on swole, you had to go through some pain and suffering. We had to go through that pain and suffering. And after that, everything kind of went better for us after that experience. And that probably was our worst deal. Which, you think so? Probably. It was critical. The hardest, even... the hardest, yeah. Yeah, especially because it's new to us. We don't know what we're doing. Well, we knew what we're doing. We knew what we were doing, but we didn't know what to expect doing that. It was critical. So if you ever get a 203K loan or anything like that, just know you're in for a rude awakening. And hold on, wait, 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 before we go. After that, do you know how long it took them for to until they had to move into the house? After they bought the house, after we closed and everything, it took them like 10 months to move into the house. Because it took the concept of 10 months. So, for those of you who think you, oh, you go watch them TV shows, them HGTV shows, HDTV, HGTV, whatever it is. And you think you're going to walk in these houses, knock walls down, all, they ain't how it really go in real life, in real time. It's nothing like that. All that is a bunch of bull and they selling you dreams. It gets real. The contractors is the key to real estate and it's the worst part of it. Dealing with the contractors, they say they don't come, they don't come, they got other jobs, they want to get a little bit of your money, then go over here and go over there. It's, it's just critical, baby. So, if you into, if you want to start flipping houses, picking the right contractors is the key to everything, to get that green. Okay, and the last question comes from Jamila. And she said, props to you and Stephanie for being able to juggle all the things you do. Real estate, branding, multi-apping, and investing. Like someone has said before, it is amazing how you guys stay so positive. So what is next for this amazing business duo and what are you aiming to accomplish by the end of 2022? Mill in New York, I'm Millie Rock. What you know about Millie? What's going on? So, huge shout out to you for asking this question. This is an excellent question. Now, I do have a lot of stuff that I'll be thinking in my head that'll be playing, like boom. One of the goals is 100k subscribers by the end of 2022, baby. You know what we do? We get busy. Look at the turtle. It's a little turtle. Why are you looking all over here like I hit the turtle? That little turtle was little too. Um, to get 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also, I would like to invest in a bigger multi unit. I have multiple two units. I want like a eight to ten to twelve unit somewhere around the area. That's what I do. want definitely want to get into that. Um, also, I want to find something else that we can make. Uh, make more income from like i know doordash and all that stuff and the gig workers all that stuff is cool but to be honest with you guys i don't want to be riding around and getting it in the winter sliding on in the snow i i, I don't want to do it baby i want to figure out another way for us to get that 200 uh, uh, 200 plus a day now let me pass the 200 plus a day honestly one of my goals now is i just told you that's like probably like maybe a month ago what did i say one of my goals is to make a thousand dollars a day that's what i'm trying to do that's what i'm trying to do and hopefully we can do it by the end of 2022. I know it's gonna be crazy, but I wanna find something that we could do to make $1,000 a day. And I, I'm, gonna I'm gonna let you guys on a little secret before we go. To be honest, I always knew about the blueprint from CGL 32s Tall Guy and Mr. Organic. I know that I needed to produce a video a day, I knew that. My question was, what am I going to do to do that? Then, my business partner, my business partner came up with us doing DoorDash and stuff. That's how it started. She came up with this idea, not me. I was like, man, I ain't trying to, I really wasn't trying to even do it. But once we started doing it, we did our first video, and then I'm like, man, this is sweet. I can do this every day. So that was my blueprint into how we got it to YouTube full time every single day like that. Now, one thing that I always wanted to do is I always wanted to show people how to make money. And that, I guess I'm doing that right now. But I do want to branch out to different things. That's why we did the liquidation thing. We looked it up on YouTube. They got to start doing that liquidation stuff. Um, and we, are we going to keep on continuing to do that? If they got some good deals, then maybe, maybe not. It depends on how you guys react to the videos. Because honestly, doing all that buying and selling stuff on eBay and stuff, it's a way more work than people may think. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot more time. So it's not like you're getting money every single day. You got to put stuff on there. You got to wait for it to somebody to buy it, all that stuff. So it's a little bit different. I also thought about getting into flipping cars and stuff. It just, it just depends, man. I don't know. I'm just I'm just going wherever God takes me. Honestly, that's what's really going to happen. That's what's really happening. A lot of people may be wondering, like, what, how did you come up with these ideas? It's just like opportunity presents itself. Just go with the opportunity. And if you want to be successful, just do that. If you see an opportunity right in your face, just go with it. I know it's going to be hard when you're first starting off. You might not know everything and all that stuff. 
but you will learn and, and you will learn and you will earn, baby. Just like we did that video of the Amazon flex, it was critical in Chicago. But we got it done and then we did it again after that. So we, we, over time, you're gonna get better and better. So huge shout out to you for asking that question. That was a great question. That's what the plan is. I also, I did one of my goals. I already knocked out one of my goals. Yesterday, my mom's birthday, so I ain't gonna tell y'all about that. You know, I ain't gonna tell y'all. I ain't gonna tell y'all about that. Y'all can't see about all that, but that was one of the goals. Also, I, it's one more thing else I wanna do with my mom before the end of the year. I ain't gonna tell y'all when, but I'm trying to do that before the end of this year because I think it's time for that to happen. So, if you just stay tuned to the full videos. I hope you guys are enjoying this video, baby. And I appreciate every last one of you. I appreciate all the love and support. And I also appreciate the haters. You gonna keep on making me get greater every day. Hey, y'all see me riding around with the baby AK. <laughs> OVO. Trey! I wanna say I appreciate every single last one of you who asked the question, even the ones who didn't, and just subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys more than you will know. We're gonna keep on continuing to go and grow. And y'all know if they try us, we gonna blow. We got, the, we got OVO right here, baby. But I'll see you guys on the next one. Make sure you like it to the next video. Also, I wanna ask you guys this question before we go. Do you guys want to see me shoot the Draco for the first time? I'm thinking about doing a gun review or uh, uh, shooting my Draco, the AK, AR-15, some nines, while we on the ground, some 380s, some babies, everything, everything, baby. So comment below and let me know if you guys want me to do that and we'll make it happen. We ain't rapping, we ain't capping, we snapping. I'll see you guys on the next one. It's Ron Vesky and we in the Vettini, the roof off like Houdini. Hey, I be seeing them haters, they probably want to beat me.